so what I wore this week, I wore quite a lot this week because mainly I wore six perfumes at the weekend. <laughs> I had a fabulously lovely quiet weekend where I didn't have any like outside stuff to do. I didn't have any, um, well, apart from like the general laundry and stuff, it was like a super relaxed weekend. And so I could be quite lazy, which is always a fun one. And, um, so I decided I needed to check out a couple of things that I wanted to know whether I wanted to keep or sell. So I woke up in the morning and I was like, okay, before I have my shower, I will do a bit of a wear test for like an hour or so, um, on some of the perfumes that I'm unsure about or things that kind of last chance before I sell them because I was sure that I would want to sell them. So we're starting with this, this is Aqua by Larive. This is a perfectly nice perfume, but I don't think I enjoy it enough to want to keep it. Um, I wore it, it was perfectly pleasant. I just, if it was more minty, I'd be more tempted to keep it, but the mint doesn't really last, it just becomes very floral. But it is a, it is a nice perfume. If you particularly like, um, what's it called? Uh, the one that it's based on, Aqua de Joya uh, by Valentino. If you really like that perfume, then then this is probably a really good budget alternative because it lasts quite well. It's very subtle, kind of skin scenty, very summery. There's just something about it that I'm not mad about. And I think, you know, the notes are mint and lemon in the top notes. Middle notes are jasmine, peony and pink pepper. Base notes, brown sugar, cedar and labdomen. I really get a bit of mint in the top. I get lots of lemon in the top. And then I think it just gets too heavy in the jasmine and peony for me. And I don't really like either of those flowers very much. You can definitely tell there's brown sugar in this though. And if you like brown sugar notes, then this I think is a really safe bet. Um, cedar and I, I don't really know much about labdanum, but maybe that's part of why this smells slightly unusual to me. I don't, I don't think it's massively cedary. I don't have a problem with that. I just think the overall scent profile just isn't quite my thing. It didn't feel like me when I was wearing it, but I wasn't like wanting to scrub it off, you know? So I just think because I've got such a big collection, I, d I don't think there's much point in keeping it, but it is very pretty. So I wore that before my shower to test it out and I decided, yeah, that, that one's gonna um, go in a bundle onto, onto eBay. And let me just get that one over there, blending into the background slightly. And then after my shower, I lost my mind because it was kind of chilly on Saturday morning. Um, and I didn't check what the weather was going to be like for the rest of the day. And I just really wanted to wear like a creamy, cozy perfume. So I very stupidly reached into my um, autumn winter perfume cupboard and I took out this guy, Periwinkle and Iris. And it, I mean, it was, it was way too sweet. It was way too sweet. As literally as, as soon as this one wore off, I, I put something totally different on because I was just like, oh no, I, I've I've done myself here because it got increasingly hot during the day. And as anyone who watches my stuff normally knows, I don't I'm I do like sweet perfumes, but I can't wear them in hot weather. Um and this one's really very sweet. But this was interesting for a couple of reasons. Because I normally only wear the Vera Wang Embrace perfumes in colder weather, um this one and the the one that smells like violets as well. Uh, no, not, not violets, um, lavender. The lavender and, is that one French vanilla and lavender, I think it's called? Yes, French vanilla and lavender. So those two particularly, those are in my autumn winter perfume. So I don't normally wear these like outside of that time. And even though um, the marigold one, melon, well, I call it melon and marigold, but it's called gardenia, marigold and gardenia. That one, I have noticed, the hotter the weather, the longer it lasts. And actually, same with this one. So if you don't mind sweet perfumes, these last way better in summer. So to me, they also, this one smelt different. So in the winter, the violet really comes out in this. So the notes are, uh, top notes, bergamot, mandarin, orange, middle notes, iris, violet, periwinkle, jasmine, base notes, whipped cream, sugar, vanilla, and benzoin. And in the cold weather, this to me, it smells like whipped cream, sugar, violets, and a little bit of the bergamot mandarin, but you know, it, it's like, it's very creamy, it's very floral. I do get a little bit of the, of the other florals, but in winter, this to me smells mainly like violet. But in the hot weather, to be fair, when I was finding it slightly uncomfortable, it lasted way longer, but the iris was way 
was more dominant than the violet when this was hot so it's really interesting because yeah from the bottle it's still really violety to my nose but on my skin as soon as the weather got hotter and hotter it got more and more irisy less and less um uh violety but it was just it was just too sweet for me for like 30 degrees like i can't wear things that are really like creamy and sweet in in hot weather so um yeah i was i was like wow damn this, this is different in this weather and it lasts longer so if you really like sweet perfumes and you want them to last longer then this is one you should wear in summer um because yeah it it lasted i reckon at least two hours longer than it normally would in winter so yeah it was really it was really interesting i mean i don't regret trying it but yeah it wasn't it wasn't really right for that day so i changed uh, when that one finally wore off <laughs> um I put this guy on. So this is a new one to my collection. This is Ted Baker Woman Limited Edition. Now, I have added some stuff to um, for a Grantica about these because I I got this one. I got the other limited edition, which is in a different bottle in a different box. I have I will have reviews of all of these things, um, and I got the original woman and. The original woman is what it says on Fragrantica. The limited edition woman is, they're different every time they release them. So this is the 2019 one. I'll show you the box just in case you want to purchase it anytime. So it's the one that's got a very plain box. It's got this kind of old fashioned deco kind of um, font. Woman limited edition and the back, very helpfully, it has a few notes on here. So I will read them because I can't find pro I, like notes for this anywhere else because all the websites keep getting it wrong. They're putting this one with the little bow, they're putting up the notes for um, the old limited edition one, which you can't get anymore and is in a totally different bottle, or they're putting up the one for the more recent one, which is a rose perfume. This is a light version of the original Woman by Ted Baker. So this, opening with notes of green tea and ginger this stunning fragrance blends aromas of soft lily and delicate jasmine finishing with warm amber and creamy sandalwood this fragrance is perfect for those who not only shine but truly sparkle so i think this is a really pretty perfume um now i do like the original woman but it's very vintage smelling it's very powdery it's kind of like a little sister to like Joel Sanders' son and Cashwell Lulu, but it's way lighter, way more gentle, way less cloying, not as sweet. But it's that same kind of weird, sweet, powdery vibe, um, kind of floral. It's got rum in it, like it's crazy. This has like a, a little bit of that, so it has some of the DNA of the original. But it's light, it's fresh. I mean, you know me, when there's tea in a perfume, I do seem to fall for it quite hard. Um, but yeah, the, the dry down of it's quite sweet, slightly powdery. It's, um, let me just look at those notes again. You definitely get that lovely ginger and green tea in the opening. But then I think it gets far more floral. It gets like, you really get the, the cream, creamy sandalwood is right. And you get the amber, so it becomes warmer, it becomes sweeter, and then it becomes quite a kind of gentle, powdery, floral smell. Um, I'm not sure I really would, <laughs> I mean, I imagine it's more lily than jasmine because obviously I'm a bit sensitive to jasmine, but I think there's loads of notes missing from this. It's very pretty. It's a very pretty powdery. It's not really old fashioned, but it's got a very gentle hint of vintageness to it. But because of the top notes of the ginger and the green tea, it's making it lighter and more modern, you know? So I quite like this one. It's about a tenner. Um, yeah, but you, you, you have to be careful because the, oh, let me just see if I can, where have I got it? I think it's in here. Um, excuse the noise. Here we go. Here we go. So just so you know, this is, this is the 2019 one. This is the 20, I think this is 2021. Um, this is the current one you can get, the Woman Limited Edition by Ted Baker. So this is what the box looks like. The notes in this, I'll just read to you so you don't get them mixed up. Florals for every season, don't mind if we do. With rose, apricot blossom, balanced with fruity notes of lichen, sweet berries, woman limited edition eau de toilette is officially in bloom. This just smells like rose. This smells very close to um, a stronger, way stronger version of like Yardley rose, but also smells quite similar to Amazing Grace Ballet rose. And the bottle for this one 
looks like this. Now I've stolen the lid off this one. If you can see, this has got a different pattern on it. So I've stolen the lid from this because I've put it on my guess. You'll see it in a minute, my um, guest tester bottle. But yeah, so these are totally different perfumes. They are not, they don't smell anything alike. This just smells like a rose perfume. It, you can't smell, well, I can't smell any of the other notes in this. It just smells like rose, just straight up smells like rose. So I'm not keeping that one because I just got the new, oh my God, I'm wearing it today. Um, I got the new Elizabeth Arden White Tea Eau de Parfum. And that is a rose perfume and it's my favorite of rose perfume that i've smelled in like years so that's my rose perfume now this is a very different one but i recommend this i think this is a really nice very cheap and cheerful perfume it's literally like 10 pounds for 100 ml um and these are all of the ted baker's eau de toilettes um so that that's only saturday my goodness i'm gonna have to speed up here aren't i so I'm talking for the rest of my life um so that was Saturday. Sunday, I woke up and decided to give Jimmy Choo Floral one last chance before I sell it. I'm definitely still going to sell it. This is an eau de toilette, 40ml. I think this is the smallest you can get of this particular, this particular thing. I love the bottle. I think it's really pretty. It's really nice. This one has ambroxan in it, and on me, it's just sour. It's so sour. And then it's very floral. It's very sour. I think like blackcurrant or something. I'll check in a sec. Yep, sharp, sour, and then it's just floral, and it's not particularly nice florals on me. But again, like, I think that's probably due to the ambroxan. My skin, not so good with ambroxan, to be honest. Um, I don't get on well with it, and it doesn't get on with me. Most perfumes that have ambroxan in smell quite bad on me. So here we go uh, oh nectarine yeah weird oh, i'm mixing it up with something else because it's so sharp that it reminds me of some other very sharp black currant ones so top notes nectarine tangerine and bergamot and it's a very unsweetened nectarine very it's like it's like biting into an unripe nectarine that's what i'd say um middle notes magnolia apricot blossom and sweet pea base notes musk ambroxan and woody notes and it just yeah it's exactly it's like an unripe nectarine for quite a long time and then you get a lot of um magnolia a bit of sweet pea it's just it's a bit sharp for me and i do like kind of sweet and sour perfumes but this one does just never go sweet on my skin yeah so i'm not keeping it it's also it's very shampooy and because i just got quite recently um azaro mademoiselle i think it's called tre floral the green one that i i wore last week that's shampooy but in like a kind of appley way and that's like that one feels very similar to the vibe of this perfume it's a different smell but it's exactly the same vibe it just works better on my skin than this i know lots of people like this i think i very much think the ambroxan is probably to blame because it normally is on me so i tried that one i'm like no okay that's going and then just because I already thought I was gonna sell this, I was giving it one last chance. This is another one that stays quite sour on my skin. I'm not sure if that's the same for everyone, but this is Signorina Infuri, Infure? I don't know how to pronounce that, by Salvatore Farragamo, Eau de Toilette. I got this one on eBay, so it didn't cost me very much, thankfully. It's an Eau de Toilette performs like an eau de toilette as all of the signorina every salvatore ferragamo perfume i've ever smelled is like not very long lasting pretty much a skin scent doesn't really have much projection this one's quite sharp quite sour again um but it's mixed with a real sweetness as well so it's kind of it's a bit of an it's a bit of a sweet and sour one but it's not one i particularly like so notes in this uh, top notes pomegranate pear sorbet middle notes cherry blossom jasmine base notes white musk and sandalwood and it's okay but as i said in the video about this one i you know i already have um the the signorina of the eau de toilette the one that's got like the cream note in it um that's like a kind of slightly rosy slightly well quite sweet but not like cloyingly sweet um, rose perfume and it has the same DNA as the original Signorina and this Signorina there's something they've got different notes but they're all they've all got something similar about them so I didn't change my mind about this I'm still gonna sell it it's still not up my street um, it takes up so much space it's a really heavy big bottles so again like let me just try and push that one over here um, 
so when that one wore off so because i had this on before my shower and then i had my shower and i wore this one this one wore off and then in the evening i put this guy on because i knew it would layer over the top perfectly fine i do love ralph um <laughs> ralph loren love and it wasn't like massively hot and i was just in the mood for it and um uh, yeah it's a really pretty perfume it's it's quite shampooy so sometimes I struggle to wear it and then other times I'm okay with it but it is quite shampooy as is the original Ralph um, but it's sweet it's fruity it's floral it's just very very pretty um, let me pull that here for now Ralph loves so this is a limited edition you stand you can still get this for not ridiculous prices nowadays actually uh, I've seen on eBay but this is the one where I always say you can just get if you want the Sarah Jessica Parker um, SJP NYC if you want something that has the same kind of vibe um, so I'm going to give you the notes for the original Ralph and then the additional notes for this because I am 100% sure this is exactly the original Ralph with some notes added um, but on for Grantica they they only give you the ad additional notes and it definitely isn't just those notes so the original Ralph top notes apple leaf Italian mandarin Japanese osmanthus middle notes yellow freesia magnolia boreana uh, bar oh no bar baronia sorry got that wrong baronia base notes musk and white iris so it's like a really lovely appley mandariny fruity floral pretty not at all woody lovely perfume that's a bit kind of soapy a shampooy and then the additional notes in ralph love which was a flanker limited edition flanker so the top note in this is red apple pink rose and cotton candy and honestly it smells like a, a slightly more rosy ralph with candied apple it smells like a candy apple um but not insanely sweet because of all the apple and mandarin that's that's there as well um it's got a little bit more rose than the original and it also for some reason has a berry smell to it there's something about the, the combination of all these notes that smells like berries um so yeah so that one really really nice really easy to wear but like i said easily like i love sjp um nyc as well and it has a a similar vibe to this one it's it's got some of the same notes in it um and it just has that same kind of vibe but it's much easier to get hold of and it's really cheap as well so just a good alternative really speaking of sjp on monday to work i took this little guy so i've already got through a big old bit of it this is dawn by sarah jessica parker um and i just wanted to give it a full day's wear test just to see whether i wanted to buy a full bottle and um i do i really like this perfume i think it's lovely it's it's really weird it's kind of hard to describe because it is very floral and when you first put it on as with all of these they smell it smells super old-fashioned but then it dries down and gets really sweet and pretty and it's just a lovely simple smelling gentle white florally kind of smell um and like before i'd smelt the notes i would have been sure that in the top there was lily of the valley because it has that old school floral lily of the valley smell about it when you first put it on but then it gets much sweeter and it just but not like cloyingly sweet it's just a gorgeous natural kind of sweet flower smell in a weird way it's like really nice so dawn is top notes violet leaf angelica and citruses middle notes orchid base notes musk vanilla orris root oak moss and vetiver and i feel like this one must be more angelica and orchid than violet leaf because i don't think that this smells like a violet perfume so i wore this on monday and by the time i got home i was like okay i'm gonna have a quick look on ebay and i managed to get this so this is a big set of SJP fragrances. I've totally got it upside down because the bottom bit keeps undoing, if you can see. So the reason I got this is because it's allowed me, I now have a little rollerball. I mean, I know what I've said about rollerballs before, but I, don't, I haven't got room for a bottle of all of the SJP ones I actually quite like because I won't wear them enough. So I've got 
well I've got like a travel size one now of the cover which I obviously have a bottle of I've got SJPMYC a rollerball of the crush one which I really like but I'm like I don't really need it because I've got Katy Perry you know what I mean um I've got Indie which is smells very similar but anyway I've got SJPMYC a little rollerball which obviously I said I didn't need because of that but I do really like and I wanted I've got a rollerball of Twilight a rollerball of Dawn and a rollerball of Endless and I sorry for the noise I really like all of those i think they're beautiful so dawn if i pop this one out so i can actually smell it without because this is this is one of you pop it up it goes off everywhere so let me just have a quick sniff yeah it smells like a really traditional from the bot from the bottle it smells like a super traditional um like floral smell but on the skin it just gets really nice and sweet i don't think it smells massively violety i think there's quite an orchidy vibe to it um it's not massively citrusy the vanilla is really subtle i get more of an orris root sweetness from this one than i do uh, like a vanilla sweetness i think it's gentle it's pretty it's so easy to wear it's an excellent office um perfume i would say this one i think it's exceptionally good for that kind of thing and to be honest i'd say the same about endless i haven't done a full day's wear test of that but when i've tested it on my skin and whenever i've like done just a little dabber of it i think that would be amazing for work as well twilight's a bit stronger i think it's designed for the evening but to be honest in winter that's a perfect office scent as well i think they are like having them part of the lovely collection makes sense because i know people use that as like a signature scent and find it very safe for the office because it's basically just kind of musky but yeah and the other reason i wanted this is because i want to give a friend of mine who's looking for a perfume a bottle of lovely and um pure bloom like i want to give her these rollerballs to test out because i actually think because of the kind of perfumes that she likes she likes woodier things than me um and she likes more floral things quite a lot of the time than me i think she might like both of those so anyway that's going to be like a little gift at my wedding actually um so yeah so that was mo no, only on monday i'm going to speed up i'm sorry um so then i wore as you can see here's my other my other cap from my from the ted baker one this is guest dare i made a video of this one already if you want to go and watch it because i'm obsessed with it the notes in this are kumquat, pear blossom, lemon blossom. Uh, middle notes, cactus flower, jasmine, wild rose. Base notes, musk, woody notes, coconut. It's, n it's not massively woody, but to me it smells like sandalwood. You can't smell the coconut as coconut. It just gives it like a really soft, slightly sweet base. It's very beautiful. I don't really smell the rose. I can definitely smell jasmine. I can smell pear blossom, lemon blossom. Cactus and kumquat gives this a stunning... Um, unusual watery fruit smell not quite citrusy you know like i said you can watch that video if you want more info about it but this is a heavily musky perfume and it's a gorgeous sweet like a bar soap musk i'm obsessed i love it it's sweet but it's not cloying but it's definitely sweet it's absolutely lush i've worn this twice this week i wore it on tuesday and on thursday because i i didn't wear it again on wednesday and then i just missed it <laughs> so it's like, oh my god um then i had i washed my hair with and conditioned it with a banana shampoo so i decided to wear super g from the harishuku lovers because it has banana in it and it's my only perfume i think that has banana in i wish i had like a creamy banana smell but um the only one i've seen that i think would fit that bill that i wouldn't hate all the other notes in is of like a super expensive one is it like one of the comptoir uh, a sued pacific i think but they're really expensive and they're really hard to get in the uk so i was like okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna wear this one it worked perfectly fine nice summery perfume top notes pineapple tangerine pear and cranberry middle notes banana coconut peach freesia base notes vanilla raspberry musk virginia cedar apart from the raspberry maybe and maybe a tiny bit of musk as with all the harishuku lovers i don't sense any of the base notes in this perfume at all um I get from it a lot of the pineapple, a, quite a bit of the coconut when you first spray it, but that calms down and then a bit more of the banana takes over. But it's a very pineapple-y, banana-y kind of yummy perfume. It's just really nice. Um, easy wear, that one, I'd say. And then I really told you I'd worn a lot. I've not got enough room for anything. So then the last one. Ugh, I've left, I just, I don't know why I've left this on. I just left it on because I think it looks cool. But anyway, so this is an Aqua Colonia. And this, as you can see, is a tester bottle from eBay. And it's one of the big ones. It's the only one I've got in a big one. And this is red apple and chilli. And it is frigging lush. 
this is one that's it's very it, this smells like candy apple and in, in fact i would go as far to say the apple note in this smells like the ralph love it's got a real kind of cat, cotton candy apple smell about it very sweet but then you've got the kind of slightly vegetal like um it's almost like a red bell pepper but with the heat of chili um kind of mixed into it but that's a very gentle note it's mainly the the sweet apple but it it just is more interesting than it would be if it was just sweet apple because it has that chili note and it's really really pretty and i loved wearing this it was really nice this one lasts for maybe three hours maximum and then like it's completely disappeared but you know it's an aqua colonia it's a colonia so right a cologne but it's very lovely now i happen to know that you can still get I don't know if there's more than one on there, but I know the person I bought this from on eBay, they still have this listed. So they've obviously got more bottles. Um, they're not cheap. They're like 35 quid, but this is, is this like 100 and, 170 mil? So actually it's quite good value because it's quite a big bottle um, and you can really go ham with it. And this is one where you can unscrew it and use it as a dabber as well. I actually unscrewed it to put it into like one of those little sprayers, you know? um to take with me to work but my god it literally went everywhere so yeah i think it's designed for dabbing and not pouring but anyway um yeah so it's just an absolutely lovely perfume and to be honest i had a lovely week full of delicious perfumes it was really nice um so yeah i'm not keeping those two but i love everything else and um i will probably do proper videos on um once i've done maybe not these because i'll just put those in my what i wore last week but i might do a proper video for this one and I, I i need to do some ted baker ones because they never get any love and i think the perfumes are quite nice but anyway yeah so that's a very long video again like um <laughs> but i wore a lot of perfume so that's fair enough so yeah that's um that's what i wore last week uh i will have more lovely perfumes this week because i'm already like i've already tested one this morning and i'm wearing a different one now after i've had my shower and then i'm going on a date with my um, fiance tonight so i'm going to be putting on something a bit stronger a bit more sexy so yeah all of the perfumes coming up in next week uh what i wore last week i imagine but yeah it's been a lovely week full of delicious scents <laughs>